In this video, we're going to talk about how you can make cross-domain AJAX callbacks from a UX component. So let's start out by considering a really simple web service that is exposed by the Apple iTunes Store. So you can see here we've just opened up a browser and in the browser address bar we've typed in the address of the iTunes web service and we specified that we'd like to look up information about a book with this ISDN number. So when we execute this page we can see that the response that is received from this web service is a string of JSON data. So now that we know that this web service returns data in the form of JSON data, let's go now to Alpha 5 and go to the interactive window. So here we have the URL of the web service and in the query string of the URL you can see that we've specified the book number that we're interested in and then in the interactive window we're going to call the xbasic function HTTP get page 2 which is going to call this URL and get the data that is returned by the URL so if I just go here and say show var you can see this is the JSON data that was returned by that web service then I can call the xbasic JSON pass function so I'm going to do that over there to pass the JSON data into an xbasic dot variable and now if I go and look at what's inside this dot variable I can see that there are two properties one called result count which in this case is one and then another called results and if I look inside results if I go question mark p dot results I can see that p dot results is actually an xbasic array and in this case there's only one entry in the array so if I go there and say for example one there's the information that came back so what I've just done here in the interactive window is get a sense of what type of data was included in the Ajax response from that web service so let's assume next that we'd like to basically put a button on our UX component to make a call to this web service and then what we'd like to do is display the description in a div on the UX component. So let's go back here and look at our uh, definition. So we can see that we have basically an input control called ISBN and we've set the uh, default value there so we don't have to do any typing. And then you can see that I've got a button that basically makes an AJAX callback and then another button here that makes an AJAX callback cross-domain. So what we're going to do here is discuss the difference between these two types of AJAX callbacks. So let's quickly go ahead now and run this in Firefox so we can actually see AJAX callbacks taking place. And I'm going to go here and click this first button. So what we see happening here is we see an AJAX callback that is taking place to the alpha server. So this callback took place first to the alpha server. The alpha server then in turn called out to the Apple server and the alpha server got the response from the Apple server and then sent the response back to the page. So you can see there's the description over here. But clearly this is inefficient. We've gone from the web page, we've called directly to the alpha server, and then the alpha server has in turn called the Apple server. The Apple server sent its response to the alpha server, and then the alpha server sent its response back to the page. And it would be obviously much more efficient to just directly call the Apple server. So let's go back now and see how that could be done and we'll also let's take a look at how this first button was implemented. So if we go back here we we'll take a look at the first button and we can see that what this button does is just a simple AJAX callback and the AJAX callback is being handled by an xbasic function called xb. So let's go take a look now at this xb function. So looking at the xb function we can see here what's going on. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our uh, description of the cross-domain AJAX callbacks and we're looking now first at how this callback would be handled the standard way using the xbasic server, the alpha server as a proxy. So you can see here's our xbasic event handler that handles the callback so we're saying that we're looking inside the e dot data submitted variable to get the value in this control that was submitted back. So here we have the ISBN number. Here's the URL and basically the ISBN was passed in inside this ISBN control. So there's the complete URL there. Then we call the 
xbasic function http get page 2 to get a response from this address and if once we get the response if the response is not zero then you can see we call the json pass function which is exactly what we did in the interactive window if the result count is greater than one then we read the value of the description from the first item in the results array otherwise we specify that the book was not found and if text is zero we can specify that the request failed and then we construct the JavaScript that this XBasic event handler is going to send back to the client so here we go and we say dollar sign div because that's the ID of the div we'd like to populate that was de defined over here as some static text with a div of div1 so he has the JavaScript so we're going to set the inner HTML to message but we need to make sure that we escape all characters that need to be escaped for JavaScript and then we just return our JavaScript by setting the function name to the return value so this is how we would handle it in a standard way by making a callback to the alpha server so now let's go take a look at the second option which is the cross domain callback. Now this is called a cross domain callback because the domain of the uh, page that the callback is being made to is the is Apple and not the server from which this page was originally loaded and by default the security policies enforced by the browsers prevent cross domain AJAX callback. So so here we're going to go here and define our cross domain callback so let's go now here and look at our event handler so you can see here we've used the cross domain ajax callback and what we've done is we specified that the url is a javascript expression so you can see there's the static part of the url so this is just a javascript string and then we're calling a javascript function to read the isbn value from an input control so let's go take a look now at how this function was defined so we'll go back now to our JavaScript functions and we can see here's our function get ISBN and it's just simply calling the uh, get value method to read the value from this ISBN control then you can see here we also have another function called callback success so if we go back to controls and go back and look over here we can see that in the success function we're just calling into the callback success function so let's uh, go take a look now at the callback success function over here and we can see that the callback success function gets passed into a data which is the data that was returned by the web service and we're saying here that if data dot result count is equal to zero then we want to show the message book not found otherwise we want to show data dot result zero dot description and then set the inner HTML of div to that so let's go ahead now and run this but I'm going to run it in Firefox so we can look at the Firebug data over here. So when I click this button over here, you can see that we get the response from the Apple server, but there's no callback to the Alpha server. So you can see that it's much more efficient because we didn't, as you can see when I click this button, I get a callback to the Alpha server. So by clicking this cross-domain Ajax callback, we made a callback direct to the Apple server bypassing the alpha server. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. We're continuing our discussion now on cross-domain Ajax callbacks. So let's now comment out these two lines over here and see what happens when we make the callback. So this is a technique that is very useful for showing what data is actually in the parameter that is passed into the success function. So you can see that we're calling the built-in JavaScript JSON stringify method and we're specifying that we'd like the JSON string to be indented so using tabs. So let's go ahead now and uh, run this and if we click the uh, button here we can see there's our Ajax callback response and this is the uh, JSON data that was sent back so this gives us a sense of what's actually in the data over there now if we go there and type in an invalid ISBN number you can see what we get back is result count of zero and then the results is an empty um, array so um, another approach that is also useful is to debug into the function so let's go here now and put in debugger and then what I'm going to do is open this up in Firefox 
and I happen to have uh, Firebug installed which is recommended anyway so I'm going to go here and click this button and you can see now that we've hit this breakpoint over there and we're in the callback function and we can go to the watch window now and just drill down into results so you can see there's results and uh, results zero and then if we scroll down to description we can see the description now a useful thing in firebug is to be able to just simply right click on something and just say copy path so if i go to the console now and then just paste in i can see that that's how we get to the description field so it would be data dot result zero dot description and you can see that in fact that's exactly what i used over there to get that value. So what we've shown in this video is how a web service, in this particular case a web service on the iTunes store, can be called in one of two ways. One, by making a standard AJAX callback to the alpha server and then having the alpha server make the web service call using say the HTTP get page 2 function or a second approach is by making a cross domain AJAX callback direct from the browser directly to the Apple server completely bypassing the alpha server now in the second case the callback was to a domain that was different from the original domain from which the page was loaded so therefore this is a cross domain AJAX callback and therefore in order to execute that we needed to use the new AJAX callback cross domain action in action JavaScript thanks very much for watching